Hi, Chris Cannon here, author of the best-selling book, Winning Back Our Boys, founder of Fighting for Youth, and the head of the Prevention Division for Leadership First. Essentially, what I do is I help people identify and overcome their barriers to success by teaching them how to maximize their skill set, mindset, and environmental settings. If you've worked in the area of positive youth development for any period of time, or you're a parent, I'm sure you know firsthand that working with young people today is challenging. Have you ever tried to communicate with a young person and they give you one word answer or they just seem like they don't want to talk to you or communicate with you whatsoever and you can't understand why? Or have you ever tried to connect with a young person on a deeper level to try to build that relationship and it seemed like they push you further away? Well, a lot of these challenges that I'm asking you have you faced, I faced the same ones myself. I used to be a teacher years ago, and I remember my first year of being a teacher. I did everything that I was taught in my classrooms, you know, as a, as a college student, you know, all of the book things that I was taught in terms of discipline, how to communicate, how to connect. And after the first week of school, I felt like quitting. I wanted to give up, go back to school and get a degree in something totally different because I failed miserably. But I did everything that I was taught to do from a collegiate standpoint. How they told me to discipline the student, how they told me to communicate, how they told me to interact, and none of that stuff worked. I failed miserably. And so I used to go to work daily feeling like a failure. Because I'm like, you know what, maybe I'm not the person for the job. Maybe they need somebody else. And after further investigating, I learned that the feeling that I felt, people all over the country felt the same exact way. Now, I did have some success with certain students, but the very hard-to-reach cases, some of the, the so-called at-risk youth, and typically my male students, I really had a problem with, I really struggled with, and so did so many of my colleagues um, whom I taught with. And what I came to understand is that the, the things that I were taught in college, they didn't work, especially with my male students and the hard to reach cases. And so what I did is I started trying to really understand why. Why were they doing some of the things they did? And through this quest of failing several times doing every single thing I was taught to do, I learned that I had to do something different. If you're familiar with Albert Einstein, he's you know, just famous for so many quotes and being brilliant. Albert Einstein said this. He said, the definition of insanity is to do the same exact thing over and over again, but expect a different result. And that was my aim for a while. That was, that was kind of what I was doing. I kept doing the same thing and expecting something different. And so I had to, with all due respect, throw away everything that I was taught in college about discipline and how to effectively communicate with young people and seek a new path, a new way of really approaching young people that was so much more effective. And so what I began to do is I began to really study behavior. I began to talk to some of those troubled students that teachers just feared or didn't want to talk to or just quickly wanted to kick them out of school so they wouldn't have to deal with that problem. And so from talking to those young people, from talking to different people who uh, counsel young people, from reading a lot of psychology books and studying behavior and just observing different people all across the country, I began to understand that there were some common themes with people who were really making some breakthroughs. And what I began to understand and what I found out is that every behavior, no matter what it is, every single behavior that young people display is asking some kind of question. And so what I began to understand is that it's better for me to try to understand what kind of question that they're asking with their behavior and try to give a response to that answer so that I can truly eliminate the behavior. And when I began to do this, young people started to see me as somebody who didn't see them as an issue, but an individual. Because when you look at a lot of our young people and a lot of the issues that they go through today, people typically look at the so-called at-risk students as an issue and not an individual. And see, when you look at young people from an individual standpoint and not just an issue, you better understand what caused the behavior rather than the behavior itself. 
And that's so important because if you can understand what caused the behavior, then you can really get to the root of the cause instead of just addressing the surface issue that when you address the surface issue, it's always going to come back up. And so from what I've been able to do is take a lot of my failures and a lot of my failed experiences with young people, as well as the success, and put it together to understand how can I help other people with this same success that I've had? How can I keep people from failing in the same areas that I failed in? So what I've done is I've taken all of those experiences, all of the years of research from reading and talking to different psychologists, social workers, and counselors, and I've put together what's called the Decisions Training Model. And I've been training adults all across the country to number one, understand what is the questions that young people are asking with their behavior. And I've trained them on how to address those questions to eliminate the behavior from what young people are truly asking. And adults across the country have had tremendous success in three areas because there's three areas that's needed to truly transform the mindset and the behavior and strengthen the relationships between adults and young people. And the Decisions Training Model has done three things for adults all across the country. It's caused them to, number one, understand young people. Number two, effectively communicate with them because you can have the greatest information in the world but if you cannot effectively communicate it it does the person who needs it no good whatsoever because you can't effectively communicate with them the third thing that it does is that it helps people to positively influence young people because you can understand them you can effectively communicate with them but you need to be able to take them from where they are to where you want them to be and you want to influence them in a positive way instead of demand and scare and, and do all these different tactics to force them into doing something that they really don't want to do and so this this model has really helped a lot of people and has caused them to experience some of the same success that i experienced early on in my teaching career that i was having so much failure with before i learned this model and from traveling the country I still observe adults all over the country who still use an old model and an old approach to reach a new generation. And it's not working. You have people that when young people, uh, they do something wrong, the first thing they want to do is punish them. You know, if a young person yells, the first thing the adult want to do is they want to yell back with them. And the whole thinking is, I have to gain control. I have to show them who's boss. And it's so far beyond that. I mean, young people are so beyond just making sure that they can talk loud to control you. It's so much more than that. You know, and when young people uh, do things like um, they're so-called disrespectful, they, they break curfew, uh, they might talk loud to a teacher or a parent. Again, the first thing that we're taught, we're programmed, and we're instructed to do is to punish them. You know, if, if a young man... Um, if he's disrespectful to another student, the first thing that we're programmed to do is punish him. Not realizing that it's, it's, far, it's far beyond just punishing what's on the surface. You know, you have to truly understand the behavior to keep it from reoccurring. Because if you keep doing the same thing, the same thing is going to happen. Remember the definition of insanity. There's even people who feel like um, you have to scare young people into doing the right thing. All they need to know is they need to be scared. They need to know what's going to happen to them if they do this. And that is one of the biggest myths. Because young people don't fear some of the things that we think they fear. You think about death and you think about cemeteries. Cemeteries don't stop death just like jail does not stop crime and fear would not stop their behavior. That is an old way of thinking. It is so far beyond that. And, it's, it, and it's, it's really a myth because it's never worked and it's not working now. And there's a new way of doing things. What really transforms, shapes, and molds the mindset as well as the behavior of today's young people is a paradigm shift in two areas. Number one, to actually have a paradigm shift with today's teenagers, there has to be some kind of emotional impact. Something that they have an emotional connection to right this instant, right now. Everything is immediacy. 
The other thing that has to happen is repetition. There has to be some kind of repetition to truly get them to form a different habits because everything comes down to habits. Because when you think about adults or young people, somebody who's had success or failure, it all comes down to habits because we don't determine our future. We determine our habits and our habits determine our future. When you look at somebody who's experienced success or failure, all you have to do is look at the habits and the habits will give you the direct process as to what got them there. And so the, the emotional impact and the repetition is what's really going to change the paradigm shift within young people. But more importantly, they need to understand that they can make a difference. So in essence, they need to have goals in place, but they also have to have some kind of proven method that goes and supports their belief system that they have something of value. What do I mean by that? Young people today, if they don't feel like they're part of something valuable, they're going to attach to something negative just to be attached to something. But in order for them to do it in a positive sense, they need an adult in their lives who's going to help them to attach to something positive so that they can have a greater meaning to understand that they have something to risk instead of living a life as if they have nothing to lose at all. Some of the most common mistakes that so many adults make is that they try to be the friend of a young person. And believe it or not, as cool as it may look, as much as they may smile, as much as they may talk, they cannot stand that. <laughs> they really get irritated when adults try to be their friend. Because no matter how cool we look to them, they always see us in a different light. And they want us to maintain our position and not try to be one of their peers because we're not. And so when we actually try to be their friend, we're actually causing more of a division than we are a connection, even though it looks like a connection is being made. Because to be their friend means that you don't have any expectations of them, and it also means that you don't have any discipline. And the thing about young people is that young people will go all the way to prison to get discipline. I know that sounds crazy, but when they don't have discipline placed on them, they actually push and push and push until they come up against some kind of resistance. Because the reality is this, it's the responsibility and the obligation to give young people something to resist against. But it's their nature to resist. But we have to give them something to resist against. And if we're trying to be their friend, we're not giving them anything to resist against. However, one of the other most common mistakes that young people experience when working with adults is adults make the mistake of trying to go overboard by going extreme in their discipline, trying to show them who's boss, trying to really send a message to everybody else. And what adults fail to understand is that when you go to the extreme in putting certain discipline procedures in place, you actually send a negative message to a lot of young people. And it's not so much so that they're not going to do the same thing that this person did, but they're going to find a more extreme way to do it, or even yet, they're going to just be rebellious. They don't care because they look at it as a sign of disrespect. If you work with young people on any capacity, I strongly encourage you to get training in the area of positive, effective youth communication. Get some training in terms of how to truly communicate with young people, but I would also encourage you to get some training in the area of positive youth development to truly understand their behavior. Get training on what is their behavior truly communicating, but more importantly, how can you answer the question that they're asking with their behavior? If you want any information about the decisions training model that's taking place all across the country, I strongly encourage you to visit our website and just get some information about it. This is Chris Cannon, your encouragement coach, reminding you that the battle is not lost unless you accept defeat.